Alright, here we are on our fifth and final piece of compass work, altitudes. We're going to do three altitudes. They are going to meet at a point called the orthocenter. So I have a triangle here. You can tell I have an obtuse triangle. Obtuse triangle is actually a little bit more difficult than some other ones, so that's why I actually chose to do an obtuse triangle for you. Okay, so we need to, uh, we need to remember what an altitude is. Way back when you started learning about triangles and to find an area of a triangle, and you talked about base times height divided by two, or one half times base times height, right? The altitude is the height of the triangle. The main thing is that the height starts at a vertex and it goes perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay? Now we have a problem. If I try to start at this vertex and come down toward this side, it doesn't have to be in the middle, it can be over here, but it's still not going to be perpendicular. So what we do sometimes is we extend this side out. And you notice that if I extend this side out and make it longer, make it a line, right, then I can drop straight down from here to hit that extension at a right angle. And that's going to be my altitude. Okay? So from here, I can head toward that side with no problem. That's going to hit perpendicularly. But from here, this vertex up at the top, down toward this side, I'm not going to be able to hit it perpendicular unless I extend this out. Same thing over, over here. I cannot head toward this side and meet it at a right angle. I'm going to have to extend this side out. My altitude is probably going to be somewhere down here. All right, so three altitudes. Altitude starts at a vertex. It meets the opposite side at a right angle. So I'm going to start with the easy one. I'm going to start with this one because I don't have to do any extensions for it. And we've done this. We've answered this question multiple times. We've done this compass work before. We have a line. We have a point that is not on that line. How many point or how many lines go through this point? An infinite amount. How many of them are perpendicular to this line? One and only one. What did we do? We did our smile. We did our chin. We saw that if you already watched the uh, in center, the angle bisector video. So we're ready to go here. Got our compass. Remember, our compass needs to be wide enough to hit the opposite side twice. That's a little bit small. It probably would hit twice, but it might be hard to see it, so I'm going to open it up a little wider. So I've got my pivot point on a vertex. I've got my setup, my compass length set up to hit this opposite side twice, like a smile. All right, so if we're kind of looking at it this way, that's our nose, that's our smile. We need a chin down here now, remember. So pivot point goes on my point of intersection, right here. Don't put it out here at the end of your arc. You have made your mistakes. Don't put it out here at the end of this arc. And definitely do not use this vertex way out here. I've had people do that. It gives you a very, very, very wrong answer. You want to be here and here with the chin out here. So, pivot point. On the point of intersection. And that's my nephew again. He's very excited about geometry. Okay, I have my two arcs forming my chin. Okay, so if you look at it this way, we have a nose, we have a smile, we have a chin, we're going to connect all the way through. And I'm actually going to connect outside the triangle in this opposite direction as well. You'll see why later on. All right, so line this up right here, line that up right there. Got this. I think I've got it lined up pretty well. We're going to draw all the way through, almost the edge of my paper there. All right, but you can see that this is perpendicular. It does not necessarily cut this side in half. It does not have to cut this angle in half. All it has to do is go through this vertex and be perpendicular right here. So now we're going to do a second one. Second one, this is a little bit of a problem. This happens with obtuse triangles. Sometimes it happens with, uh, with acute triangles where when you draw the smile, you can't quite see the second point of intersection. So what we need to do, we talked about this, we can't go from here down to that side and hit it perpendicular. It's got to come this direction. So I'm going to line this up. we got to do this very carefully. You don't want to line your ruler perfectly on that blue line because then the pencil actually ends up above it. So I'm going to line this up. I'll show it to you this way. So I, what I actually do when I line things up is I put my pencil point on this and I push my ruler to the pencil point. And I double check down here. Push, Put my pencil on, push my ruler. I'll double check here, but you can actually see the blue line sits off to the side a little bit because the pencil is going to sit off to the side a little bit. And I'm going to extend this blue line all the way basically to the edge of my paper. You can see it's a nice straight extension. I get people sometimes when they extend it, it starts going like this. It's not going to help. It starts going like this. That's not going to help. 
I want a nice straight extension now. I'm going to work from here down toward that extension with my smile and my chin. <coughs> Excuse me. So my chin is going to come way down here. So I got my compass out again. Definitely not big enough here. I would never hit this side at all. So I got to go bigger with my compass. That I'd hit once, not twice. Got to go a little wider. All right, looks like I've probably got this wide enough now. So pivot point on my vertex. Pencil is going to hit this side or the extension twice. It's actually going to hit the regular side once there. It's going to hit the extension the second time. That's fine. So I get that. So I've got this right here. Remember, don't use the tip. Don't use this vertex. Don't use that point of intersection. We want to use this one. And then this one out here where we have the uh, smile hitting the extension. All right, so out here. First arc, right here, second arc, we got that, maybe could have drawn this one a little bit longer, but I see the point of intersection, that's all I need to see. And so, line this up with my vertex, so remember this is the vertex we started working on, remember, line it up, Pencil on, push ruler to pencil, double check. Once I get it all lined up, I'm going to draw this nice and long. And this should be perpendicular. It obviously does not bisect this side. It obviously does not bisect this angle. It's not even inside that angle. Okay? Only has to be through the vertex and perpendicular. Okay, I still got one more. It's out here. Same thing. You cannot go from here to this side and hit it at a right angle. So I'm going to have to extend this side out down here. And my altitude is going to run this way. That looks pretty good. It's running right toward that point. That's what we want to see. So I get my ruler out again. Remember, we don't just put the blue right on the ruler because my pencil is actually going to be a little bit too far, in this case, to the right. So I put my pencil on the vertex and I push my ruler to the pencil. And I come down here and I put my ruler on, or my pencil on the vertex and I push my ruler to the pencil. And then I come back up here and I double check, make sure everything's good. I do it a couple times even. Looks like I've got it lined up pretty well. I draw this all the way out to the edge of my paper. Okay, here we go. We need one more smile, one more chin. So from here, big smile. This is a big distance. Got to open my compass quite a ways. That is definitely not wide enough. Okay, so that looks like it's probably wide enough. I'm gonna have it. It's gonna intersect out there. That's good. It's gonna intersect over there. Looks like we're pretty good. So here we go. Make sure everything's not gonna move on me. Pencil, or pivot point on my vertex. One nice smooth arc from here all the way over to there. That's my smile. If you guys don't remember what I'm talking about, that's like a nose, that's like a smile, chin's going to be down below. Now I can shorten my compass up when I do the chin, otherwise it's going to end up way, way, way down here, which I may not want. It might even be off my paper sometimes. Okay, but I have it intersecting once here. I don't care about all these. None of that matters. That doesn't matter. I've got it intersecting out here. That's what matters, those two. So. What I really need is, all I need is my compass to be open more than half of this distance to get an arc somewhere down in here. So I'm going to shorten this up quite a ways. So from here, is that more than half? Yeah, probably. I'll open it just a little bit, just in case. Okay, that out to here is more than half. Okay, so I'm going to draw a nice little arc right here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw an arc. That is my chin. It's a little more pointy chin than some of the ones we've had on our other ones, but that's fine. It is a chin. So I'm going to line this up with this. Okay, once again, pencil on vertex. Pencil on point of intersection. Push the ruler to the pencil. I've got that all lined up. I'm going to draw this nice and long. And you can see right there is where all three of my altitudes are meeting. So I'm going to put a dot right there. Okay, and there we go. That is my orthocenter. Now, there's nothing cool about an orthocenter. Not, it's not the center of a circle, like a circumcenter or an incenter. It's not a balancing point like a centroid. It doesn't have any special ratios like a centroid. It's actually kind of boring. But there are a couple things you need to know. First off, the orthocenter is the one point where the three altitudes meet. And then, obviously, you can see it's outside an obtuse triangle. Well, where outside? It's outside past the obtuse angle. Okay? Now, if you look back to when we talked about a 
um, a really bad version of a circumcenter with an obtuse triangle. That was outside past the longest side. Okay. In this case, you can see it's kind of the same triangle, but the the circumcenter is down here outside the obtuse angle, or the, the orthocenter. The circumcenter is outside past the longest side. Okay. The orthocenter is outside an obtuse triangle past the biggest angle. If it was an acute triangle, it would be inside. Makes it really, really easy. A right triangle is absolutely the easiest. If you draw, if you are asked to find the orthocenter of a right triangle, it is at the right angle's vertex. I'll show you why really, really fast. It's really, really easy. It makes sense. So, if I'm asked to do the orthocenter of a right triangle, let's draw a right triangle just real quick. Nothing fancy. But let's say I have a right triangle. Remember, an altitude starts at a vertex and goes down to the opposite side and hits it at a right angle. So this side of the triangle is also considered an altitude. And over here, I start at a vertex, and I come over here to this side, and I hit it at a right angle. That is considered an altitude. Right? So all i got to do is draw one more. From this vertex, I head toward that side, and I meet it at a right angle. Well, where do all three of these altitudes meet? Well, right there right at the right angle's vertex. So, we really don't have to do any compass work. Okay? If you have a right triangle and you're asked to find the orthocenter, it is at the right angle's vertex, that's it, you're done, there's no compass work involved. Which means, guess what, I probably won't ask you to do that one. All right, I will ask you to do something like this, or I will ask you to do it for a right triangle, or sorry, for an acute triangle. So, orthocenter is where the three altitudes meet, it's outside an obtuse triangle, inside an acute triangle, and at the right angle's vertex on a right triangle should be the fifth video you've watched. If it's not, make sure you go back and watch whichever other ones you haven't watched, but you should have watched by now. Mid-segments, medians, which meet at the centroid, perpendicular bisectors, which meet at the circumcenter, angle bisectors, which meet at the <clears throat> in center. I think I may have said that previous one wrong. Let's go back and start that over. Mid-segments, medians, which meet at the centroid, perpendicular bisectors, which meet at the circumcenter, angle bisectors meet at the in center, and now altitudes which meet at the orthocenter. So five different compass works you need to know how to do.